happen. Uh, rather than, uh, uh, it's a bit of, <laughs> we've, we, um, now we look beyond the front doors and marketplace facades to the real scandalous lives of the people behind the pinnies. EastEnders Scandals looks at the Wicks family. Wicks family are secretive, fiery, screw you, Kevin! Complicated, selfish. I told you to get rid of it! Strong, witty. Yes, one is quite amused. Sassy. Fractured. I just like it being like one of the Wicks's because um, I just think that they rock. The Wicks family have formed an integral part of Albert Square. From womanizer Wixie in the 80s to the present day and the arrival of a new generation. A fragmented family. They've certainly made their mark, but there is one thing in particular that binds them all together. Historically, the Wicks have always been big trouble. There's one scandal after another, and I think it'll always be like that with them. Mm. Yeah. They say all stories are about either sex or money. Um, with the Wicks, it was always sex. Simon, you can't leave me like this. I'm having your baby, for oh, God's don't sake. Don't start all that again, Cindy. It ain't mine, and you know it. Feel it. Go on, just feel it. And the latest Wicks family are no exception. I'm not your dad. Kevin not being my dad is pretty devastating. It's a massive, massive lie that's gone on for so many years. So why don't you do what you've always wanted, eh? Go on. Push off! So as Kevin looks set to return and face the aftermath of the latest scandal to hit the family, why bring back the Wicks? I like the new Wickses. When we were looking for a new family, the Wicks name in the way that the Beals and the Fowlers it's absolutely synonymous with, with Albert Square. I think it's terribly important to have families coming into the square who are connected with the square. It means that the audience don't have to work so hard to know their provenance. And I think it takes the audience about a year to get used to you anyway. And being a Wix, I think, give us a helping hand. One for the road. It's a whole dynasty, and the audience love that familiarity. You're a Wix, that's right. I'll say. There's something wrong with that. Oh, only if you enjoy sleeping with other people's wives. We decided to um, send in kind of like a scout or a, a vanguard first, which was Dino. It's much easier rather than when they're coming on mass sometimes. Dean knocks on Pat's door and says who he is. <laughs> oh yes, it's Pat. Let's see if you can tell me who these people are. Dino recognises members of the family. That's Uncle Derek. That is Auntie Connie, and that's Auntie Connie's mad mate Iris. He burnt Connie's ass down making pancakes for the kids. That's good enough for me. She realises that he is one of the family, and she, she takes him in. What are you doing here? I mean, looking up somebody you don't even know. Smells of trouble to me. I think it was good for Pat to have, to have a, a, a family that she hardly knew uh, drop back into the square. But Dino wasn't as sincere as he seemed and had a few tricks up his sleeve. Now, come on, let's have your dad's number. I'll give him a ring. You can't. It was, it was in a car crash. What? Just before Christmas. He's dead. It's all lies, of course. It was typical Wicks entrance. Dino telling Pat at the beginning that his dad was dead was just... just it was thinking it was coming in at showing everyone what he's about. Couldn't stand the house on my own anymore. So lonely, it freaked me out. So that's a tiny bit of a surprise to Pat when Kevin walks in. Kevin? Dad. Hello, son. I come onto the square to say goodbye to Dean because I'm going off on my travels to Italy and Europe. Thanks for looking after the boy. He's a good kid. You just need to keep an eye on him, that's all. And um, Carly turns up on the square because she's been married. Dad! <laughs> and she's left her husband and come to find me and Dean. The new generation had arrived and Kevin was starting to show a very different side to the Wicks family. I think David and Simon were, 
womanizers in the show. Kevin's not. Right then, Ingrid, it's your turn at last. Sorry. You won't be. He's very different. He's not the sort of Casanova type that, that those that those two were. I think you're bonkers, loud, arrogant, mouthy. And that's your chat up line, is it? But you're also clever, funny, passionate. He's charming as in he's one with words, isn't he? He's affable, he's likeable, but he's not dangerous. Kevin's more of a uh, stay-at-home sort of guy. Denise, I've spent the last 20-odd years working my knackers off trying to raise three kids. When here would I have time to be Jack the Lad? But Kevin, along with his children, certainly made an impact on the square. <laughs> I was going to have a hot dog, but I've heard rumours. I want your son! He'll be responsible! However, they aren't the first members of the Wicks family to leave a lasting impression on the square. Simon Wicks, better known as Wixy, made his own mark. 20 years earlier. When Wixie first came into the show, he was kind of every man to me. I think that was the thing about Wixie. <laughs> All right. Tell the road mark, hello. Go right and under the bridge, darling. Blimey, things are looking up, aren't they? He was obviously really successful with the women. He kind of represented that that young male uh, part of the audience for EastEnders. He was like a pop star on the square. Every loser wins once the dream begins. You know, he had his relationships with all the girls and all the girls loved him. She's half tidy, so what can I do? I'm only human. <laughs> Simon was the first of the sort of wild boys, wasn't he? Music to vomit, boys. <laughs> Come out like this! What's all this, Simon? But it wasn't until Wix's mum, Pat, turned up that the sparks really started to fly. Pat, God bless her, it's hard to imagine Walford without her. Pat's had her fair share of scandals. <laughs> it was never going to be quiet when she arrived. Pat hit the, hit the square, just, you know, like an explosion, really. I can recall very well my first scene. I had a, f a pair of white flyaway sunglasses and I walked up behind Den. Then he was. And he turned around and saw me and obviously knew it was me. And then created havoc for a few episodes. Hello, my darling. Hello, Pat. Kathy, I've never recognised you. Very stylish. Very. Remember the old times, Denny? Now and again. Me and Pete, you and Ange. Yeah. You and me on the odd occasion. More than ruffling a few feathers, promiscuous Pat had something much more scandalous to reveal. We both know who fathered Simon. I think the first big story with Wixie uh, was, you know, who's his dad? There was not so much a mystery about who Simon's father was. It was more a tale being spun by Pat. Obviously, it was assumed uh, initially that it was, that it was Pete, because that's who, who, who Pat was married to at the time. Simon's not your kid, Pete, get it? You're lying! The bitch, you're lying! Get off me, Pete! Get off me! Do you really want to make me cry? Then it turned out that Pat had an affair with Pete's brother, Kenny. He's your dad, if you want to know. She wanted to control the blokes around her to stop them controlling her again, so she'd play games with them. And she was really tough. Either of you could be the father. But one thing's quite certain. He's definitely mine. And there were even suggestions that Den was the dad. Long time ago, as I said, over before the creation of man, dead before it started. I might fancy resurrecting it. You what? Well, see, there's nothing to stop me telling the entire population of Walford that after all that, I do know who the father is. Eventually, Pat admits that Brian Wicks was his father. There was only one man in Walford then. He was the real thing for a time, that... 
That's why I married him. I think that scandal about, you know, who was, who was Wixie's father was a really strong story at the time. It was about, you know, who were the men that were important to Pat, how she kind of had control over all those men, and she loved it. He kept them all guessing, under the cosh. It wasn't like you need to know this because you need to know the truth, was it? It was like, I've, I've got the power because I've got the knowledge, and I'm a troll-up. And that was a scandal that really worked well because it was of a theme which was about family and about fractured family. Simon resented his mother. But they had a strange ongoing relationship because when he had the affair with Cindy, she sheltered him. Now, you won't say nothing to her, will you? What do you take me for? I'm your mum. It's your secret. To bring in Cindy, who was within at the time, um, to then embark on an affair with Simon um, was a great story. The impact of that was gobsmacking at the time. There was something about Cindy that was slightly reminiscent of Pat. If I didn't know you any better, young lady, I'd say you were giving me the camera. Oh, the penny farnie dog day. She was a bit of a, a good time girl. Another scandal was about to unfold, but there was a much bigger secret to hide. Simon, you can't leave me like this. I'm having your baby, for oh, God's don't sake. Don't start all that again, Cindy. It ain't mine, and you know it. Feel it. Come on, just feel it. Cindy was pregnant with Wix's child as she walked up the aisle to marry Ian. It said a lot about Cindy, actually, to marry Ian, knowing that she was pregnant with someone else's child. I hate to think what this is going to do to you, but Stephen isn't your son. <laughs> Scandal had struck the family yet again. And with Wixie finally owning up to his responsibilities, he left Walford with Cindy and the baby. But three years later, David Wicks arrived, sending shockwaves across the square once more. Hello, Mum. Simon was a boy, or young man, and David was a real proper alpha male. Scotch, please, Chief. It's difficult to pick out um, who would be the most scandalous or, or the worst Wicks, but I think if you were looking for the one with the darkest heart and the most evil, I think it would have to be David Wicks. You contacted the missing persons for me? No, I didn't. What? I didn't go to the missing persons bureau. You told me you did. I lied. David was a selfish character. Spit it out, Caroline. Got all day. I think he just needs to feel top dog, however he does it. What were you doing? I was watching that. You can watch this now. Ultimately, the only person he really loves is himself. You and your stupid, selfish life! Look, I am doing my best. We saw this kind of Machiavellian David Wicks. I promise I will never keep anything from you again. He told me people's emotions. I need this chance, Mum. He messed about, he played around a bit. You stagger from one woman to the next, dragging everyone down around you. David was a conqueror. What? I've never seen you looking so lovely as you did tonight. He would steal your wife just to prove he could. Anyone on know? Listen, between you and me, she's married. He liked the chase, he liked the danger. And then, of course, David chatting up Bianca. Did you often badge of blokes you hardly know to buy a drink? Only good looking ones. You look nice. Yeah, I like it. No, I think it brings out the woman in you. Do you think so? Yeah, I do. Although the attraction was ill-fated, as it led to an alarming revelation. Hey? What a terrible shock to discover that he was chatting up his daughter. You're Bianca's father. I had to tell you. To what? Cue phone call to the Samaritans, as you would if you fancied your own daughter. Poor Bianca hadn't a clue what was going on. So when Bianca turned to David, after boyfriend Ricky cheated on her, Confusion arose. Give it a couple of days, you know, and you'll probably find yourself um, a terrific new boyfriend, someone, someone who'll appreciate you, yeah? When he was telling her about the way that some guys are... I could kill him treating you like that. Bianca was convinced that he fancied her and he just didn't know how to articulate that. Kiss me. And that led to a point where she came onto him so strong, he had no choice but he had to tell her. Want you? And you want me as well, didn't you? Please don't do this to me. And that's the point when he finally has to tell her. Oh, cry out, Lady! You're trying to drive me insane. I don't mind not. I mean, what's your problem? I'm your father. All right. David's playboy past had finally caught up with him, but he wasn't about to change his wayward ways. Right. What if I join you? I think with Cindy and David, um, there was absolute 
physical attraction from the moment they set eyes on each other. The chemistry was fantastic, and you just knew that it was only a matter of time before they were getting their kit off and getting down to it in that kind of wixy way. Why don't you shut the door and close the curtains? Because you're not going anywhere. He's coming up the stairs. The relationship he had with Cindy was just pure toxic. It was wrong. <laughs> that was just going on for ages. He was wrong for her. She was wrong for him. It was bad, 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 bad. No, I've got to pick up the kids. Oh, I <laughs> he was a really naughty character. All that porter cabin action. No. And you thought, they must get caught. I mean, they're in that porter cabin and... Lord knows, you know, the whole thing's rocking and everybody will see in the square. Nope. I think we ought to talk. Come visit them, darling. Look, I'll see you later when we get everything sorted out then, all right? He was never going to be pipe and slippers. He was never going to look after her. He was always better for an affair and a fling. You see me to get it in then? Well, I'm not seeing much of you at all at the moment. When we first thought these two people have to be together, th there was kind of the breaks for a moment. We went, whoa, haven't we done that already? We've done a Wixie and Cindy. It's a chance for us to get to know each other better. Sorry? After all, I'm the boy's uncle. And then we thought, well, no, hang on, that kind of makes it cool. Because, you know, what's that going to do to Ian? To think that this Wicks family have kind of, you know, it's like they're picking on him. Yeah, what was the score? 1-0. I think we let the Cindy and David story run and run for a little while. I think it was just fantastic, because we're getting so much from it. What's on the menu tonight? I don't know off the top of my head. You have to come and find out for yourself, won't you? It was kind of all the mind games that they were playing, the mind games that David was playing with Ian. Oh, I'm ashamed. But you were Cindy. I was upset to flirt with her. The relationship between Cindy and David was so passionate, you know, it was only going to end one way. It had to end, you know, in a bad way. Thinks about time we had a little chat, don't you? About? You and Cindy. So when Ian finally cottoned on, he planned his revenge and hit Cindy where it would hurt the most. Cindy, I want my children back. They belong in their home with me. Yes, well, I'm their mother and they belong with me. The children will reside with their father at 29 Albert Square. Cindy, realising she was going to lose the kids over it, realised the only way she could have her children was to run away with them. Mummy, where are we going? It's a surprise. David had driven the kids and Cindy to Eurostar and put them on the train. Why don't you come with me? You know I can't. Why? Don't you understand? This is what I do. Soon after, David, like his brother before him, quit the square, leaving Pat, now part of the Evans family, behind. I think there's a distinct difference between Wix men and Wix women. Pat personifies that and absolutely embraces that, which is I'll stay and, and brave it out and I'll front it. But she was never far from her own scandals. You've been sleeping with my husband. Well, to be honest, I don't remember doing an awful lot of sleeping. Oh, oh. But it took the new generation of Wicks and the arrival of Carly and Dino's absent mum, Shirley, on a family trip to Dorset to lead to one of the biggest scandals to hit Walford in years. Excuse me. Yeah? Um, I'm looking for a village called Kingston. Yeah, about a mile. Yeah, we're just going there, actually. I don't suppose we could... Lift. You bet. When we first met her, we just thought she was weird and just a, a random person. Which made it quite interesting when we found out she was our mum. There's no way I'm going to go to lunch with her. Yeah, me neither. Shirley wasn't going to give up that easily. And before long, she turned up in Walford, exposing her identity. I think Shirley showed up in Albert Square because she genuinely wanted to get to know her children and realised that she's made a lot of mistakes in her life. Well, there's certainly um, a, a similarity between the chaos that, that Shirley created when she arrived and Pat created when she arrived in 86. Happy New Year. It was a real Wicks woman look, that kind of... Uh, been around the block a few times, got a few bruises. <laughs> She looks like Pat, her attitude's like Pat, 
She's aggressive like Pat used to be. Screw you, Kenny! That's more like it! Knew you were in there somewhere, Shell! Pat sees something in Shirley, what she was like when she was younger. I was alright until you came here, and so was everyone else as far as I can see. We're better off without you. Crawl back under your stone and die a miserable, lonely death. Possibly the greatest similarity of the characters is that actually, deep down, they're quite vulnerable. And all that brazen brass, it's a good front, but underneath there is a, a, an insecurity as a woman. Kevin, you know, obviously hates Shirley for what she did. She walked out 17 years ago and never sent a birthday card or anything, hasn't seen her kids since, and all of a sudden comes back with a guilty conscience. After all that time, Kevin wasn't very happy. Kevin! What are you so scared of? Carly sees the argument that I have with Shirley. She obviously recognises her from Dorset and her mind is just absolutely racing and she makes the decision that she's going to talk to Shirley. Excuse me, Dorset lady. They decide to go for a drink together in um, Vargos. you got kids. Yeah. Close. See much of them? Uh, they're all grown up now. Lead their own lives. All of a sudden it, it just gets too much and she realises that, yeah, this is her mother and she asks Shirley to come back. And what's, what's her face doing here anyway? What's she doing here? Mm. That is our mum, Dino. Although shocked by this revelation, Dino was intrigued to find out more about Shirley. Dino did grow up with his mum and he's always just wanted his mum to be there. She left you, you don't know why. I asked your dad to explain, he said, I don't know why she went. If Dino wants to know, he should ask her. He thought, that's it, I'll just go and see her and I'll explain everything to her and I'll go and speak to her and everything will be alright. He'd been round to see me at the flat that I have and I was busy. Look through the window and there she was. Big slob of a feather on top of her. That just sent him off the rails. It was just like, what? It's like, I haven't known you for, for like 18 years. And you come back and you're drunk in the middle of the day, you don't want to know me, and you're sleeping with some random dude. And it's just like, what's going on? So he thinks, Sodja. And he just goes, just drives and drives. I think the crash was a bit of a turning point because Dean had this romantic vision of a mother and him, you know, her being by his bedside. What do I know about what mothers do? They stay. That's what mothers do. Dino had decided that he still wanted his mum around him, but Carly had a very different reaction. Her presence is really felt that she is going to be part of this family, that she's there, and Carly is so, so angry. I've kept it with me the whole time. I kept you right here. You were with me right here. We've not been apart. Well, not so close now, are we? No. She's quite threatened by this woman because like, she's looked after Dean herself and, and they've got a you know, very close, tight relationship. For somebody else to come in and potentially take him away, she, yeah, she feels really, really threatened by it. Now, why do we did last time? I up and disappear. Wait! We don't need you! Dean! I think it's been devastating for them. But at the same time, I think they're quite intrigued to find out what having a mum's going to be like. When we realised that we quite like to see this woman that abandoned these kids, we then thought, well, we're going to need something else to blow. We're going to need another secret. And why the honesty is breaking out? Why don't we include the kids? See if they can cope with the real truth. I think as time went by and Shirley didn't turn up and the social services didn't come knocking on the door um, and no one bothered, he just let things go. The best thing to do is to tell the kids as soon as possible. What? Risk losing them? Not an option. But surely... But... Yeah, won't say a word. Know why? Because she's got me where she wants me. The kids start getting a suspicion. There's some secret that's very deep and very meaningful. What's going on? Nothing. Why? <laughs> Just having a chat, that's all. When Carly finds out, she understandably takes it really, really badly. But... Uh... I'm not your dad. <laughs> I've never been told anything 
as dramatic as that in my life, and it's that's difficult to to play. So who's our real dad then? I can't really say. Tell us. The person that that, that she loves and that she adores and that she respects. Um, and that she goes to for advice, has lied to her. Why didn't you tell us before? Well, there was never a right time. Easier to lie to us, yeah. She's angry, she's, um, you know, very emotional. That's great, that is. It was really good to play. It was so, so, so juicy. Oh, he needs me! Don't you dare say that! I think if it hadn't have been forced out of him, Kevin would have kept it secret. Carly's very nasty to him. She's very tough on him. Carly just couldn't find it in herself to forgive Kevin for that. So she lays into him. But I'm your dad. No, you're not my dad! You're a fake! And you always have been! And wanted by his children, Kevin left the square in true Wick style. Kevin ran away because he couldn't really cope with the rejection that might happen. Everything that matters in Kevin's world are them two kids. There was a sense of guilt for not telling them. There was all sorts of reasons. He, he was having a... I think it sort of sent him into a downward spiral, really. He felt that his life was in tatters and the best way to deal with it was to leave Walford. Carly and Dino have taken... Kevin's leaving differently. The rug from under them just gets pulled away. He is like the root of, of, of that, that unit. He's gone, ain't he? He's left us. With his father gone, Dino started to form a relationship with Shirley. I ain't leaving you behind again. Get your coat. <laughs> For Dino, I was just the last person there that he had to lean on, you know, because he's nothing really without his dad. He tries to confide in her and speak to her. And they are starting to have this kind of relationship now and it's growing. Just come home, Dean. Now! I'm sorry, sis. <laughs> Carly and Kevin have always shared this mutual hate, almost, for the fact that Shirley walked out on them. When Kevin goes and walks out, she's left her own with all this hate of people that walk out. <laughs> she's the last one to see him and she thinks that it's her, that, that, that that's the reason why he's left. I told him exactly what I thought of him. I was really... I was really horrible and I said some really hurtful things and that's why he left back because of me. With the family torn apart, the return of Kevin is certain to cause more turmoil. So what's in store for the current Wicks family? I think there's loads of stuff down the road from and more fireworks. Where there's a Wick family, there's going to be upheaval. It's just one thing after another, after another, after another. It may test their relationship to the point when it's... when they realise that it is something that's important. I think it's going to be really interesting to see what happens to that, that family. We've seen maybe about 30% of how bad and funny and crazy this family can be. I think there's a lot more to come. The Wicks, you know, all the years that they've been in the show have had their fair share of trouble, so it ain't gonna end here. <laughs> Stay with us for more murderous musical moments as Comic Relief does Fame Academy. You'll feel like a gift.